Good morning, good morning. We're in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. I got a bunch of stuff on my trailer. I have two drops, one here in Weyburn and one in Lampman. One word, Lampman. I've never been there, never heard of it, but it's not, not too far away. It's like an hour away from here, small town. It's like supplies for grain bins, I believe is what I'm delivering. Disassembled, once you put them together, hey, you got a grain bin. I'm your grain bin guy today. Let's go get this stuff delivered, and then I have a reload of reels that's headed back to Winnipeg from here. We found a spot here at the co-op in Weyburn. It was the very last spot I could find. It's, it's cleared out today already, but we're right on the edge here, right on the side. It's a nice quiet spot for the night. So I'm hoping to get this all off my trailer quickly. I'm just waiting for my e-log here to say I can get moving and we'll be on the road. The first drop is about a half hour from here. It says it's in Weyburn, but it's about a half hour from here. It's not too far away, and then another hour from there is my second one. Now, if this all goes bang, 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 bang today, and I can get both deliveries off quick, I might be able to get unloaded later. Pardon me, reloaded later this afternoon yet. I'm still waking my brain up. I'm gonna go in and grab my coffee right away. But I'm, I'm kind of doubtful on that. This kind of stuff I'm on, it's got a lot of tiny little pieces. Like I said, it's like disassembled grain bins, pretty much. So it takes quite a bit to get it off, and there's two stops, so we gotta make sure we pull them apart correctly and don't drop anything for the second drop at the first drop. It's probably gonna take most of the business day today, and by the time I get back here, it'll probably be too late to get reloaded, but we can keep our fingers crossed and try our best. The schedule and appointment for reloading is tomorrow morning. And then it's just six hours back to Winnipeg, so I'll be back in Winnipeg tomorrow night. So either way, we've got our plans, we've got our marching orders, and now we gotta execute them. That's what we do. Let's go get her done. Hey, 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 right. We are ready. You're locked and loaded. Let's go. Got everything. Check the tires. Engine's got oil, antifreeze, fluids. Everything's running well. Engine is warmed up. Oh, I need to dust my dashboard yet. Mm, I don't want to look at that dust all day. I did that yesterday already. Drove me crazy. At least the gauges, right? Because there's some most of that stuff out of there. I don't want to stare at that all day. So why do I want to stare at yesterday's dirt, right? It's yesterday's dirt. It should be in yesterday. It's not yesterday, it's today. I wish every day we could wake up and just press a button and restart and boo, everything would be clean and all of yesterday's dirt would be gone. Yesterday's problems would be gone. Oh, <coughs> oh what a world that would be. But that'd be no fun, right? That'd be no fun. How are you gonna fix any problems then? You gotta be a problem solver. Okay, here we go. Off we go to the races. Let's just make sure our trailer's gonna come with us and that what I saw out there was true. Yep, it's attached. And the brakes work. Roll forward. And the brakes release. Yes, it's gonna be a good day. Just in time for the parade, I see. How oh, nice. I call it the Trucker Josh Parade. Every time I want to get moving, suddenly it's like the Truman effect. People everywhere. Not too bad. At least we don't live on the coasts where there's so many people that are stacked on top of each other. section we were talking about yesterday can't really see so you sort of got to like dive this way and then you dive this way to bring your nose 
at a 90 degree angle with the road so that you can see oncoming traffic. Now we can see there's only one pickup there and he's turning. And we can go. Nobody coming from there. Now I gotta find somebody that could unload me. It's only like two pieces coming here, I think. It's a big place here. Wow. It's very quiet too. I found one guy. He's gonna go and find someone who can uh, come here and unload me. There's a huge operator way out in like the middle of nowhere. 15 miles of gravel road to get here in all directions 15 miles back out of here Poor old blue. I'm sorry. We got to do what we got to do for money, right? We got to do it. I didn't have a choice. I didn't mean it. You still love me? Okie dokie. Okie dokie, okie dokes. Take my traffic cone uniform off. Oh, I got my GoPro in the pocket. Let's not leave that in there. 
I'm gonna need this for you guys. We're just leaving here now. I've just called my customer in Lampman. I'm gonna be there at about 2.30. They said, okay, Trucker Josh, we'll see you there. Get unloaded, that'll be the rest of the afternoon. Definitely not gonna get reloaded today then. So I'll only be back at Weyburn like around supper time, probably like seven, six, seven o'clock. That's what I'm thinking. So we'll park nearby the shipper and we'll be there first thing in the morning. I'm just gonna check my, uh, well, I'm thinking about it, check my messages here on my computer, see when they're expecting me. They're expecting me there tomorrow. Yes, so I'll be right on time. All right, on first come, first serve. All right, so uh, let's try and be first, I guess. Aye, aye, Cap. That should be enough. Just put my traffic cone uniform there. I don't have to wear that everywhere. I just choose to be. Because when I'm out of the truck, I'm moving around the whole trailer, taking straps off, strapping things down. They're taking pallets off and they're in their machinery, right? I just like to be a little bit more visible to them. That's that's why I, I just, I don't want to die. All right, back down the gravel roads we go. I got two ways I can get back to the paved highway. I can either go straight south and it's 23 kilometers to the next paved road, or I can go straight west from here and it's 18 kilometers. So either way, it's like 15 miles or 18 miles. I'm gonna take the shorter one. Sorry, old blue. I'm sorry. We got to make money. If the money is down the gravel roads, we go down the gravel roads, right? That's the way it works. That's the way it works. We follow the money. We're not running a charity here. We're trying to make money. You're not quite just a show truck. I mean, you're my show truck. But officially, you know, Still a working truck, old blue. And, and that's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being a working truck. You should be proud of that. You got a lot of character, a lot of little bit of scratches and dings here and there. Shows that you've done well. You've had a good life. You got a lot of life ahead of you yet. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Get out of the farm here. This is a big operation. It seems like a big corporation or like a big, like big farm. Cause I don't, I don't know if people actually live on this site. Maybe they do. I think there's probably a house over there. Yeah, there's a house over there. Never mind. It's just a really big farm. The farms out here in Saskatchewan on the prairies are massive. Like some of these farms, are like thirty thousand acres. They're just massive. I mean, a lot of farms are probably about around like three to 10,000 acres, 3,000 to 10,000 acres, somewhere in there. But uh, the, the actual farmers in my comment section can correct me and tell me how big the average farm is in Saskatchewan, because I'm not a farmer. I just deliver your stuff and I'm happy to do it. They're building stuff here though. I think this shop here is new. I always love being on a farm. It's like a feeling of freedom. You're just so far away from everything. Especially like on this farm, like gravel road in 15 miles in any direction. Like the only people that are here are the people that are supposed to be here, right? It's just quiet, peaceful prairie life. Love it. It's kind of how I grew up. I grew up closer to the, the main roads, obviously, but I, I always lived in the countryside. I moved to the city of Winnipeg for a little while. I even lived right downtown in the core on Kennedy Street behind Portage Place. <laughs> Never do that again. But uh, I did for a year. I realized that's not for me. I lived in St. Fatel in the suburb there for a little while. I realized that still wasn't for me. Well, it's too much, you know, too busy. Too many people, everybody in the city seemed to be in a rush. And often people are very grumpy. And they don't care about you. Often. Not everybody, but everybody's, you know, got their own thing and they're all trying to do it now! And they all want everything yesterday. I find that, you know, in the area that I grew up in in the southeast, everything's a little bit more calm, laid back, and like, hey, let's just get her done safe. Like, let's let's have fun while we're doing it, maybe. Let's just relax a little bit. You still get those people who tailgate you like there's no tomorrow, but a lot of times those are visitors from the city. <laughs> 
You know, we have a, a baby on board sticker on the back of both our vehicles, right? But we usually use the SUV to transport little Theo around. It's like a three month old baby. You would not believe, or maybe you would, but you would not believe the amount of people that will still tailgate you when you have a baby on board. Oh, you want to get Trucker Josh mad. That's the way to do it. You can mess with me all you want, but you mess with my kid. That's a total different story. You're opening up a can of worms you don't want to open. You'll find a different side of me that you never knew existed. <laughs> you back off. I'm not joking. You think I'm joking? That, I, I joke a lot. I'm not joking about that. Look at this big canola field, eh? I love it. Very often these canola fields, they'll have uh, bee farmers that'll come and like put a bunch of bees like uh, in those boxes in those nests to help the like pollinate everything. I know my language isn't the most scientifical, but you know what I mean. That's big, big yellow fields like this. It's always awesome this time of year to see. I love the prairies. I really do. Look at this. Look at this. Doesn't this just say home to you? Look at this. this that's what it does for me. It's just I look around and this is just the, the biggest feeling of home. Anyways, enough yapping. I'll talk to you down the road. I gotta get, get down these gravel roads and get back to the paved road. This is actually a town here. Did you know this? Leuven. Leuven. L-E-W-V-A-N. Leuven. Bryston is 19 kilometers that way. Oh, down this road. Colfax is 10 kilometers that way. Like, well, I've got to cut this really wide because this is a... This is a sharp angle corner. All the way to this side. Where's all the houses? I thought this was the town right here. Okay, nobody coming from that way. Nobody coming from that way. You can see like five miles that way, five miles that way. Nobody's coming. Beautiful paved road. Wonderful. Oh, this is gonna feel good. Oh, you feel that, old blue? You feel that? That's nice. Ah, that is nice. Gladly. You know what a good thing about these visors is? Uh, these window chops. I can have my windows open like this in the rain and get a nice fresh air flow through here and not get wet. It keeps the rain out, but it lets the fresh air in. And then my whole truck smells like fresh rainfall. It's awesome.
combine city over here. Yikes. There's more over there. Huh. There's lots of combines. Not too sure where they want to unload me. I'm looking for someone. Oh, another combine in there yet, too. Wow. Grain bins. Grain bins. Grain bins. Grain bins. Grain bins. So they're about half done unloading me. It's pretty much the whole trailer that was coming here. So I'm taking it off one piece at a time very carefully and stacking it out here in front of my truck. And then as soon as the trailer's empty, I head back to Weyburn. It's the time now. Time is now quarter after four already. Uh, they'll be long closed by the time I get there. So tomorrow morning is when we'll be reloading for sure. I was hoping to get it, you know, get it done today yet, but there's only so much time in the day. And all that right there is my load. So they got about maybe half of it off. Slowly getting there. There we go, they got the heavy part off, right on the tail. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, they're good. Just slid down his forks. It's all good. <laughs> you gotta be very careful the way you unload this stuff. Everything is so bendy, it's all like aluminum, right? So it's very light steel, very, very flimsy. So it dents and breaks and scratches very easy. And it's all sort of stacked onto the trailer just right. So you have to make sure you take off the right piece. It's sort of like playing a, a game of Jenga. Not quite as extreme, but you gotta take it off the trailer in the right order and very carefully. I know that in Europe, very often the drivers unload their own trailers. That doesn't happen here in North America. That's not our job as drivers. We get it here and then they unload the trailer. So the shipper loads the trailer, the receiver unloads the trailer. We just pull the trailer and secure the trailer, secure everything onto the trailer. That's the way the, everything is, all the responsibilities are divvied up here in North America. So unloading here, not my responsibility. My responsibility was done when it got here and I got my straps off, all rolled up, put away, got them in my truck. I'll still help them sometimes. They don't need my help. They got a little team working on it here. If they need my help, I'll gladly help them, but most times, most cases, they don't want you helping anyways, just in case they don't want you in the way. They got big machinery moving around. They'd rather you just stay in your truck where they know they're not gonna hit you or where you're not gonna get hurt. And a lot of paperwork. Right back where we started today. There's the co-op. I'm gonna find a spot. It's much earlier now, so there should be a spot available for me today. I already told them, Karen. Can't see who's coming here again. This is that weird intersection. So I've got to sort of button hook it here so I can see who's coming. We're gonna go this way. And then we're gonna go this way. Oversized loads here today. I really hope I can get a really good spot now. If not, it looks like my spot I had yesterday is still open. So we just go park there again. That's right beside a livestock hauler. Depends how dirty his trailer is, right? <laughs> no, I can smell it from here. I can smell it from here. I don't want to sleep beside a stinky trailer. <laughs> Not if I have a choice. So, I mean, if I have to, I have to. I get it. It smells like money. All right. 
see there's lots of space for us to park right here. Right here. Right on the side. Lots of room to get out in the morning if someone comes and parks right beside me. Or I could back out as well if I had to. But I think I'll be good here. I think. I mean, I could go and see what's over there. I'm gonna go take a walk. Just to make sure I got the best spot. Just to make sure. I moved. A little bit of a better spot. More level ground. The spot over there on the side was nice because it was off to the side, but it was also slanted towards the ditch, right? Because you're right beside the ditch. Which isn't so bad, my head would be higher than my feet. But why park there when I have a nice level parking spot right here and I'm closer to the building? I'm gonna go inside to this restaurant and have some supper. I very rarely eat out on the road. Sometimes I, I mostly view it as kind of a waste of money when I can bring food along for myself. I need to go grocery shopping though. I don't have too much food in here. I haven't eaten much all day and it's just been a long, long day. Not a lot of work, I wanna say a lot of work, but just a long day. And I just wanna go in there and have a nice supper go to bed tomorrow morning we'll go down the road and pick up our load so thanks for hanging out with me today everybody i appreciate it don't forget go down below make sure you're subscribed we make new videos every day i travel around the midwest of the united states and canada based out of canada if you're new here well, we take the odd trip longer uh, that goes further out than that but usually about a thousand mile radius from winnipeg maybe that's not a written rule or anything i, mean, I sort of go where the loads go but if you want to go into my playlist from way back in the day, I've been making videos pretty much every day since like 2011 or 2014. You can go down to my playlist and you can see me when I was over the road going all the way as far as Newfoundland, Yukon Territory, uh, Georgia, Florida, all over the place. So I've been everywhere already and uh, now I sort of keep it a little bit closer to home. I got a little boy at home. I can't wait to get back to see him again. I miss him so much when I'm gone. Oh, now I'm thinking about him again. I miss that little guy. I miss my wife, but this is what we do, right? We're truck drivers. Just because we're out here on the road doesn't mean we have to act all tough every second of every day. Like, believe me, truckers are some of the toughest guys I know. Because of course, every single one of these guys out here misses their family, of course. But what does it help to go crying about it to each other, right? It's not something that usually comes up. But if you do start talking about your kids with another trucker, They'll usually jump at the opportunity to talk all about and brag about their kids and their family as well too. Guys love talking about their family because everybody misses their family, right? Part of the job. We gotta put food on the table. And I'm fortunate enough to really like trucking and I really like what I do to be able to provide for my family. So, with that being said, I'm gonna give them a call and then I'm gonna go and have some supper and maybe edit some videos. I got just like, what is it, like 5 o'clock here? I have like 14, 15 hours before I can load. <laughs> I got some time. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow.